So the team today, we have Daniel, who was the project manager, Abby, Kieran, Abdul, and Guy. I'll hand you over to Daniel, who's going to be our opening presenter. Hello, thank you, Simon. Um, so like Simon said, my name's Dan. I was the project manager for Travelwise. Um, and in the team with me, I had Abby, um, who was working on our front end. We had Abdul and Kieran, who was working on the back end. And we had Guy, who worked on the front and back end testing. So we were approached and tasked with the challenge to create an app that promotes sustainable tourism and encourages travellers to be more eco-conscious. So together, we came up with Travelwise. Travelwise is an app where the users can find the most eco-friendly countries to visit, find eco-friendly travel routes to get to these places, and can also earn points every time they add a memory, which they can then spend them on, spend them on things like future travel. So the team came together and we started brainstorming ideas on how we could bring this app to life. So working in an agile manner, we started by working on some wireframes to get an understanding on what it may look like. We created a stakeholder analysis. Um, we're figuring out what, who would the key people be who would be using this app and who would we need to keep informed the most throughout the whole process. Um, after this, we created an ERD and finally started creating some to-dos on our Trello board, assigning them based on our individual skill set. Uh, so this is our stakeholder analysis that we created. Um, based on the people we thought were important for the project, we plotted them on the graph. Um, so we thought the people that should be the most informed and managed closely were the travellers, um, the people that would actually be travelling to the different countries. Um, so we plotted them quite quite at the top right of the chart. We wanted to keep the environmental organisations and eco-conscious businesses satisfied. But they didn't need to be managed as closely. Um, we wanted to monitor the individual countries and finally keep the transport networks informed. So this is our ERD that we created, which consists of six tables. We wanted to get a clear understanding of exactly what we would need in our database so we could get the correct file structure right from the beginning of the project, just to make sure that the project run as smoothly as possible from start to finish. I'll now pass you over to Abby, who will take you through the wireframes and give you a demonstration of our app. Thank you very much, Dan. So as you can see, we have opted for different shades of blue when selecting colours for the wireframes, as we decided we really want the app to feel calm and tranquil, so we thought blue was the best for this. Our intention was to infuse the wireframes with a tranquil yet engaging aura that would resonate well with users. Beyond just wireframes, we envisioned the website transitioning from mere visual concepts to a dynamic and interactive platform with different features, as I will now show you during the demo. Everyone, I'm Abby and I'll be walking you through our site today. So once you've made an account and logged in, you'll be welcome to our homepage here, which tells you a bit more information about the site and the different um, features that we have, including exploring the world, getting eco-friendly routes, getting eco-friendly rewards, and your own personal travel diary. So starting at the map page, I would like to travel somewhere within the world, but I would like it to be eco-friendly. Now, there's no good way of finding how eco-friendly different countries are without doing a lot of research, which is very time consuming. So you can press this button here in the top right corner, show eco color, and it will highlight all the different countries, different shades of green, the darker shades of green being low eco friendly and the lighter shades of green being very eco friendly. So if I would like to travel to France, for example, we can pop it in the search bar in the top left and it will zoom into where France is. And as you can see, it is very eco friendly. So I can pop a pin saying I would like to visit this place and it will also show you a bit more information about the country, which again, saves some more research. If you've already visited this place, you can pop another pin just so you don't forget. So I would like to travel from London to France and click Get Suggestions. Perfect. So now that the AI has auto-generated some responses for us, we can then opt to take the train. Um, so we can take the Eurostar, and it is estimated that the carbon would be 24 to 32 kilograms per passenger, with a one-way trip to be £79. So if you'd like to offset your carbon emissions, you can do so with the button below. And then moving on to memories, if you've been to France and you loved it and you would love to make a memory, you can then pop a picture in, give it a title. 
add a date, say that I went yesterday, for example, I wish I did. And then it will say memory has added successfully, 10 points added. So you get 10 points for every memory that you make, which you can then spend in your reward section. So if you'd like, you can edit or delete it. You can then go to the user and rewards page. This is where you can update your profile photo and your user information if you wish. You can then scroll down to the bottom here. So you get 100 points for creating your account and an extra 10 points for every memory that you add. So this is where we can spend our rewards. So right now we have 110 points, so we can only get up to 10% of train tickets. So if I would like to get 10% off by Kaya, you can click yes, I'd like to spend this. And then it will add your purchased items at the bottom here. So you can keep track of what you have purchased. So that is everything for our app. Thank you so much for listening. I will now pass on to Abdul to speak about technologies and significant code. Everyone, uh, Thank Abby and Abdul. Everyone, for that, uh, Abby. Abby. Thanks for that demonstration, Abby. Um, so to build the website, on the front end, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as well as using Bootstrap for some um, styling, React and Vite for some deployment, OpenAI for our auto-generated auto responses, and leaflet.js for our use of the maps. For the backend, we use Elephant SQL for our databases, uh, as well as Vtest and Jest for testing. Now onto our first significant piece of code. For the first snippet, we have gone for this code, which allows us to filter through our, our AI-generated responses, looking for keywords such as train, bus, and bike, and then applying the matching icons to the option cards, improving both the user experience and the visual appeal of our website. We are proud of this piece of code as it builds upon our implementation of AI, as it just doesn't just return a, a card of, of what the AI responded. On the bottom here, you can see what the code looks like in the website. For our next piece of code, uh, we have chosen this snippet, which allows us to enhance the map visualization. Firstly, we are able to create borders around countries and then fill the countries based on the environmental performance index, which shows how sustainable the country is. On the right, you can see this uh, code in practice with the countries highlighted. You can also see a key in the bottom left corner, which shows how eco-friendly the country is. I am now going to pass you over to Guy, who will talk to you about testing. Thank you very much, Abdul. So as was mentioned a couple of slides ago, we used Jest to test the back end and Vtest to test the front end. And using this, we managed to get a 98% test coverage on the back end and an 82% test coverage on the front end. We had some problems um, testing the front end, in particular with testing the map components. Um, we didn't really have any experience with this, but using the Vtest um, documentation and in particular the sections on mocking imports and mocking functions, we were able to eventually overcome this challenge. Uh, this wasn't the only challenge we faced, though. Um, we had other problems as well. One of our big problems was using AI. None of us had used AI or tried to implement AI into a project before. And the first AI we tried to use, which was DaVinci, we couldn't get it to give us any sort of sensible responses that we could use to generate the uh, recommended routes that you saw a couple of slides ago. Um, but we managed to fix this by switching to OpenAI. And with refining our prompt, which took a lot of trial and error, we managed to get it to give us the suggestions we needed to implement those routes into our website in the best way possible. We also had some problems implementing Leaflet. Leaflet, as was mentioned, was the technology used to load the map. Um, none of us had used this before either. And we had a lot of problems with getting the map to respond in the ways we wanted, with, for example, the, getting it to change color, with adding pins where we wanted. But again, we managed to overcome these challenges by reading the Leaflet documentation. And yeah, we were able to overcome all of these. I'm now going to pass you over to Kieran, who's going to talk to you about some future features. Thank you very much, Guy. So for our reward system, the original idea was to reward users with the discount in travel, which they could redeem using the points that they've earned. Obviously, for this project, this was unavailable, as we'd have to partner up with actual travel companies to do this. So that's a future feature we'd like to have, where users would be redirected to the partner's website, where then they could book their tickets and arrange their travel. We also wanted to have a feature which would recommend eco-friendly products that the user could shop from, but they could also use their points for a discount, making further use of our reward system. Also, we know having a community is important, so another feature we wanted to have is a TravelWise forum, where people who are interested in the eco-friendliness can share their memories and experiences, which would also include links to share on their social media. In addition, we would like to have a feature, potentially on the map page, which recommends eco-friendly accommodation in the area, just as an option for people who are traveling to stay in if they wanted to. So overall, just having more features, which would really boost the eco-friendliness of that. For what we've learned, as previously mentioned for most of us, it was our first time using the AI in our projects. So implementing this was definitely a learning experience. Also using OpenStreetMap and Leaflet.js for the first for the map functionality was new. So we learned a lot using this in our app and writing the code to do this. 
And that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Please ask any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, team. Um, an absolutely amazing app. Lots of love for this one in the in in the chat. Um, really, really great feedback on your style choices, on the different pages that you uh, that you uh, implemented across the app, which were fantastic. I do have a few different questions, uh, which I'm going to go through quickly. Um, first question comes from Tom. Um, how did you get the information to decide which country was eco-friendly and sort of how eco-friendly each country was? Uh, I could take this one. Um, so to measure that, the eco-friendliness of a country, we use the Environment Performance Index. Um, this index takes into takes in a number of different factors, um, which each have their own weight of importance, and then gives a weighted score of 100. Then it ranks the countries. So the closer to 100, the better. It takes a number of different factors, um, such as air quality, water quality, sustainability, and how they tackle climate change, just to name a few of them. Uh, once we got the numbers, we put it into a JSON file and set up a function so that if the score is between a certain threshold, um, which is found on their website, but I can't seem to remember at the moment, if I'm honest, um, it fills the country to the color associated with high, mid or low eco-friendliness. Nice. Thanks, Abdul. Um, the uh, the other question that I've got following up was uh, from Julia earlier. Hi, Julia. Uh, Julia's uh, an alumni of uh, La Fosse. Um, lovely, lovely to hear from you, Julia. Um, she asked specifically about Leaflet JS. Um, do you mind talking a little bit more about sort of how difficult that was to implement and what were the significant challenges with that? Uh, yes, I'm happy to take that one. Um, so I actually initially was having a look at implementing Google Maps, um, which is actually when I come across OpenStreetMap and Leaflet JS. Um, and it, it was actually quite a lot easier to implement. Um, the, the documentation for Leaflet JS is very clear and concise on exactly how to put whatever function you need. So for example, the search for a country or drop in the pin, um, it made it really clear on how to implement that in. Um, and yeah, that that's, that's pretty much how, how it went. Nice, thanks, Dan. And then finally, we've got a question from Tonster. Um, how would you measure the success of this app? Uh, okay, I don't mind taking this one. Um, I guess we would measure it by how many people have joined up, um, how many people have made memories, um, probably as a future feature, include how many times certain travel has been like auto-generated so we can see how many people have been trying to find eco-friendly routes. Um, I guess that to just start off with before we implement more features in the future. Brilliant. Thanks, Abby. And I'm so sorry, Tony. Uh, that, that makes a lot more uh, 